you want to know how I knew this series in general and how I got the laser disc boxes of the TV series, please watch part 1 of the marathon. So anyway, let's have a quick look. It's a standard laser disc set, it's two boxes, and the highlight of this is obviously the art. It looks really good, better than the actual show. Also, each volume has that rough texture just like the cover of the box set of the OVA. And you get the normal goodies you get in every Laserdisc. It's a normal set, nothing unique or special like the OVA's box set. By 1998, Studio AIC decided to do a TV series for the Lotus franchise. But those guys knew what they were doing. They didn't start the story from the beginning, which I admire them for doing that. So what am I talking about? Well, the last 5 episodes of the OVA were a loose adaptation of the 3rd and 4th novels, The Dragon of Fire Mountain arc, with an original anime ending. So the people who did the TV series decided that they start the series with a retelling of the Dragon of Fire Mountain storyline in order to be more faithful to the novels, and it was the first 8 episodes. Then from episode 9 tells the new story that adapts the last 2 novels, which they are volume 6 and 7, and they ignore the 5th novel completely. So basically the first episode of the TV series picks up where episode 8 ends in the OVA, and when it comes to the storytelling of the Dragon of Fire Mountain arc, this is better than the OVA, and the characters who are less developed in the OVA are fleshed out more in this, like Orson, Shiris, and Ashram. They are more developed and I cared about them more than I did in the OVA. And on top of that, we get a bunch of new characters that I really loved. And since this arc follows the novels more than the OVA, there are many differences. Yes, the story is the same, but the fate of many characters and how the plot ends are different. And the arc starts with a 5 year time skip, which did not happen in the OVA. Anyway. The reason why I explained all of this is because I'm going to focus only on the second arc in this video, which starts at episode 9. 10 years have passed since the Battle of Fire Mountain, and the land of Lodo still have wars and problems with the people of Marmo. Cause let's face it, as long as the biggest trolls ever, Wagnard and Karla are still alive, there won't be any peace in Lodos anytime soon. The characters in the OVA are back, all grown up and some of them became kings. And we have a new set of characters that represent the next generation, just like the main characters in the OVA represented their new generation. So there is not much to say about the plot itself because it is basically a continuation of the same conflict. And it is still as amazing as the OVA was, it's even better in my opinion. All the new characters are fleshed out and the story finally concludes in this. The OVA characters are seen as legends, which I love when I see that because I witness the reason why they are called legends. Another thing to mention is that the TV series is more lighthearted than the OVA, but that does not mean it doesn't get dark or serious, it does, but generally it feels more joyish and upbeat which wasn't a bad thing in my opinion because it fits the happy optimistic mentality of the new generation. Also, there is the comedy skits after each episode that basically parodies the events of the series and it runs for a few minutes, and it is called Welcome to Lotus Island. This is just one of the funniest things ever. The only criticism I got for it is that sometimes the episode ends on a high dark note and it is super serious and then the comedy skit starts suddenly and immediately, and I thought that breaks the mood sometimes. I mean, if it was placed after the ending song, it would have been better. Oh, and I forgot, the pacing can be slow at times. Not a major issue, but I noticed some events, you know, getting dragged on more than they should. The voice actors from the OVA are changed. A lot of them got voice actors that sound much older, which makes sense since there was a time skip. Although I have to say, the voice actor Shuichi Ikida, who voiced Kashio in the OVA, was replaced by Nakata Joji, a fantastic voice actor who is best known today for voicing Alucard from Helsing and Kotomine Kirei from the Fate series. 
It's not a bad choice by any means, but like I mentioned in the OVA video, Shuichi Ikida is my favorite voice actor, so I was like, oh well. But the best replacement is by far the voice actor of Ashram. They got Hayame Sho, who is known for voicing Devilman from the Devilman OVAs, and known today for voicing Aizen from Bleach and Tokiomi from Fate Zero. Huh, both of them play a role in Fate Zero. Anyway, like I mentioned before, the main characters from the OVA are back, but they are not the focus, and that's fine since they steal every scene they're in, especially Deedlet. And I have to say something, a jealous Deedlet is the most adorable thing ever. Anyway, so let's talk about the new group of this generation. Like the previous group, you will see a pattern when it comes to classes, and this is not a traditional group. They're like rebels or they follow their own way, and I find that great. Yes, they are similar to the previous group in the OVA with similar powers and everything, but their personality is different, so they were familiar and fresh at the same time. The main character Spark, like Parn, he is the underdog of the story. He's young and very ambitious to become a knight and a hero. He idolizes Parn and sees him as a role model. He is from the Kingdom of Flame and he serves under King Kashu, and is bound to be the future king according to Kashu. But he's a little rebellious. He does what he feels is right even if it jeopardizes his role of becoming a knight. I love Spark, even though a lot of people I know do not like him at all and prefer Parn over him. I like Parn more as well, but that doesn't mean I hate Spark, he's awesome. He's so similar to Parn during the early episodes of the OVA, where he was reckless and naive. Spark retains that aspect throughout the show, which is a double-edged sword as it can cause a lot of problems in his journey. And that's something I liked because I didn't know what stupid or brave thing he's going to do next. The other main character, Nice the daughter of Slain and Lelia. They named her after her grandmother, Nice, one of the legendary heroes. And she is the core of the story, which is that Wagnar is trying to use her to resurrect Cardis, and he wants her as the vessel, or the doorway as the show states. This character is great because she is very powerful, just like her mother and grandmother, her only weakness is the lack of experience, and that makes her a good character because in the end, she is a child. Spark and Nice are supposed to be the new couple of the show, like Parn and Deedlet were in the OVA. Even though their story is more developed than Parn and Deedlet, I like Parn and Deedlet more as a couple. I don't know why, maybe because their relationship came naturally and they focused on showing it more than telling it without interrupting the main story. Generally, their love relationship was explored more in manga-only adaptations. The Half-Elf Leaf Like Deedlet, she uses similar magic attacks. And this character is really funny. She always thinks that the characters are falling in love with each other the second anyone is alone. She is the annoying shipper, nosy and adorable, and a comic relief. Garak and he is like the tank of the group, and he would do anything in his power to protect Spark, because of reasons he kept secret from everyone, except one. The dwarf priest Grievous, who has voluntarily accompanied Spark in his journey because he sees the potential in him. Not much to say about him, but he is the experienced one in the group, and he's always collected and calm. Although I liked Gim from the OVA more because I prefer his backstory and he was part of a very memorable scene, he just had a bigger impact on the story in my opinion than Grievous. Aldonova the Wizard, or short for Aldo, he serves under Slain and he is like the caretaker for Nice. He worries about her a lot and is very protective of her, and sometimes the way he is so protective of her is kinda cute. He's a good character and develops well throughout the story. He starts as the scared member and then eventually becomes braver than the other main characters. Raina the Thief. Now this character becomes a member of the group later on in the story. She wasn't like the rest of the group being ordered by Kashi or anything. She doesn't serve the story a lot, but she is needed. I don't know why, it's just that when she joined the group, I felt like finally the group now feels complete. She is the mature character and develops a personal friendship with Garak, a 
and it felt natural and it wasn't forced. Spoilers ahead! I'm going to mention something about the ending, so skip this part if you don't want any spoilers. So by the end, the goddess of creation Marfa is summoned and told Spark if he sacrificed Nice, there will be eternal peace. And if he doesn't, she will go away and doesn't grant him anything. And of course, Spark chose that Nice won't be sacrificed. And to be honest, I don't get this cliche, I never did. Sometimes humans just amaze me of how stupid they can get. Yes, yes, love conquers all, blah blah blah. But I'm pretty sure Nice wouldn't mind. And this was one hell of an offer. If I was him, I'll go like, sacrifice her, I'll toss away my personal happiness for the sake of the land. And again, Nice wouldn't mind. But no, humans are supposedly better than that. Eh. The art is one of the two reasons why most people who watched the OVA did not even bother with the TV series. And yeah, the art for this is just poor and way too bad sometimes. It is not consistent at all. I mean just watching the same characters in the OVA and the TV series and seeing the difference is staggering. And the fact that the OVA came out 8 years before the TV series is mind blowing. And I get it, the OVA was a higher budget anime by Madhouse, but still it is 8 years prior. The lack of details and everything else is really a turn off. I didn't want it to look better than the OVA, but at least it could have looked good. There were other anime that came out during that same time and had a decent art without a big budget. So I don't know what happened with this. I mean why is Slain looks creepy as fuck sometimes? What the hell? Though sometimes the art gets better when the characters faces are close, but when they are not close almost the entire time it's horrible. The villains do not have that intimidating look anymore, as well as the dragons, except for Mikan, that dragon still looks majestic. To be fair, some episodes have decent art, and Marmo still retains that evil presence and look, but generally it was way worse than the OVA and I guess people were mad because Madhouse set the bar really high. But again, it was bad on its own without comparing it to the OVA. Another thing to mention is something related to Woodchuck, and this spoils the ending again so skip this part if you don't want any spoilers. Ok, I'm going to rant on something that bothered me for many years. So by the end when Carla was eventually defeated, I always thought it was a shame that it wasn't Woodchuck's body because that would have been so emotional for Parn when they get his body back. Because there was no closure for Woodchuck at all. I mean in the anime they showed that Carla used Woodchuck's body in the beginning, but later on it wasn't? That was and still is confusing to me. Is she using multiple bodies? They never say that, I think. And if she was, at least make her use Woodchuck's body when she is defeated. That would have been much better. Or maybe it was Woodchuck's body but the art wasn't consistent? Because it is an issue with this anime. Uh, I, I don't know, but it is something that still bothers me today. The second reason why people didn't like the TV series. The animation for the OVA is way better than this. I mean if you check episode 1 of the TV series and episode 8 of the OVA, you will see the difference because they have the same fight scene. And it makes you wonder how a high budget anime in 1990 is still not considered standard in 1998 yet. But again it is unfair to compare them sometimes because this is a lower budget TV series and that was a high budget OVA by Madhouse of all people, who are known to make their anime projects timeless for the most part. So this is a prime example of just because it is newer doesn't always mean it will look better automatically, sometimes it doesn't and vice versa. But the animation can get good sometimes when it needs to be, especially during major battles. And episode 7 is the best animated episode in my opinion. How can I talk about the music without mentioning the legendary opening? This opening is more known than the anime itself. It is one of my favorite openings of all time and it never gets old. This is the best opening in my opinion that sets up any fantasy setting. 
and the video is just as amazing as the song. And I believe they spent most of their budget on that opening's animation. It is by far one of the most mystical openings in anime. As for the ending, ugh, it doesn't come close to how brilliant the opening is. If the ending song of the OVA is the ending song for this, then it would have been perfect. As for the soundtrack, it's great. Is it better than the OVA? I don't think so. But there are memorable tracks. And there are some emotional ones that were used during important scenes, which made me tear up a little bit. If you look past the bad art and animation, this is a good anime because the story is great and it develops everything at a good pace, and concludes an amazing story that started in the classic OVA. Yes, the anime could have looked better and it doesn't have that magical feel of the OVA, but I was so invested in the story and characters so I forgot about the bad stuff, and that is the power of this anime. The storytelling is well done and when the story ended, I had that feeling where you will really miss the characters and it felt like a bittersweet goodbye. That always outshines the art and animation in my humble opinion.